morning. I'm so happy to be here this morning with all of you. And I'm sure you're happy to be in the house of God. Why don't you turn to your neighbor again and tell them you are at the right place at the right time. And uh, it's been a while since I preached on Sunday. So what time, what time should I end? Just go ahead, huh? 2 p.m. lah, I think. <laughs> Church, can I just see your smile? Yeah. Jesus is so good, amen. He's so kind. He's so loving. You know, before we get into the word today, I just want to worship Jesus and just welcome the Holy Spirit in this place. I know He's already here, but the more we are aware of Him, the more His presence will increase, amen. So can we just close our eyes wherever we are? Just be aware of His presence. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you, Lord. Thank you that you're already here, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. You're so welcome in this place. Just be aware of Him. We love you, Father. We love you, we love you, we love you. If you're sick in your body, I want you to just begin to receive your healing. Is there pain in your body? Are you not able to sleep at night? Holy Spirit is here. His presence is right here. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is healing, there is freedom, there is miracles. Why don't you begin to receive your miracle right now? I just see back pain being completely healed. I see knee pain going right now in Jesus' name. Some of you haven't been able to sleep at night. Your thoughts are all over the place. God is just bringing peace into your mind, into your emotions right now. If you can speak in the Spirit, why don't you begin to lift your voice, speak in the Spirit right now. Come on church, all across this place. Lift your voice, the Holy Spirit is here in this place. He's here right now. Shut up, 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 shut up
Come and reveal Jesus to us this morning. Holy Spirit, just be so close to us, God. We know that you're here in this place. Lord, let there be miracles. Let there be freedom. Let there be breakthrough all across this place. Let there be joy, Lord, even as we hear your word this morning. Lord, I commit myself into your hands. Even as I would share your word, Lord, let every word be from you, Jesus, and not from me. And Lord, we open up our hearts, every single one of us, Lord. Would you come and speak to us this morning? Would you come and speak to us, Lord? Come and touch us again this morning. We thank you, Father. We love you. Can we just tell him, Lord, we love you, we love you, we love you. We are ready and expectant for what you're about to do this morning, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we ask and we pray. And everyone said, Amen, 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 Amen. And you know, church, um, the presence of God is in this place. And so if you came in here with pain in your body, or you need healing of any kind, I just want to encourage you to receive the healing as, as, you, as we begin to hear the word this morning. Amen? And you know, church, we've been talking about the pillars, the seven pillars. Um, last week, we talked about prayer. Last week, um, Sunday, Pastor Rajan preached, right? And um, we've been talking about prayer. And then yesterday, Jeff talked about the supernatural. And I just want to talk about the seven pillars this morning. How many of you remember what the seven pillars are? Can we uh, say it out together? First one is prayer. Second one is worship. Next. Oh, I cannot hear those at the back. What's the third one? Oh, still cannot hear. I'm going to go to the back. Huh? Nobody, everybody's sleeping. What's the third one? Those at the back. What is that? I cannot hear. The, oh, sorry, auntie, yes, what? Discipleship, yes. What else? Auntie, you remember what? I cannot remember she wasn't around. Auntie Linda, what else? Sorry? Oh, no, not media. Um, uh, word, the word. What else? Auntie Shirley? <laughs> Auntie Josie, do you remember any? <laughs> okay, we have worship, we have the word, we have discipleship, we have missions, we have generosity. We have, what else? What are the other, the other two? Um, uh, supernatural and, what's the last one? What is the last one? What did I not say? Generosity, word, mission, supernatural, discipleship. I didn't mention discipleship, right? Okay. So, <laughs> church, are you awake this morning? 
please don't fall asleep on me, okay? <laughs> All right, and so we're talking about the seven pillars and these are the pillars that we'll build and what we're going to be focusing on in the second half of the year. And I believe that even as we focus on these seven pillars, God's about to pour out a new anointing, a new oil. And that's the word that God has been speaking to us, that there's going to be a new anointing that will be released upon Calvary Community Church. And if you believe that, can you say amen this morning? But we cannot go ahead and go and talk about all these pillars and step into all these pillars without the factor of the Holy Spirit involved. See, because I wrote here, for prayer, we need the leading of the Holy Spirit. For worship, we need the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because if we don't have the presence of the Holy Spirit in worship, then we're just singing some songs and playing some music, right? For discipleship, we need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. For connection, for discipleship, for studying the Word, we need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. For the supernatural, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if without the power of the Holy Spirit, you can just pray for the sick without the power of the Holy Spirit and nothing will happen. But when we talk about the supernatural, we are talking about the power of the Holy Spirit and we need the Holy Spirit. For missions, we need the compassion of the Holy Spirit. If not, we will be like any other association going out and helping the poor. There's no difference between us and them. For the Word, we need the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Because when you read the Word of God, you cannot just read the Word of God on your own and try to understand and make sense of it because without the inspiration and the revelation of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God is not going to make sense to you. The Word of God will not come alive to you without the power of the Holy Spirit. And finally, for generosity, we need the provision of the Holy Spirit. Every aspect of all these pillars require the, the Holy Spirit. And I think sometimes the aspect of the Holy Spirit in the church has been forgotten. Or we have kind of like just left it out because we are so comfortable just doing what we do and in the norm and the routine of whatever we're doing. And so often we forget that the person of the Holy Spirit was given by Jesus when he left and went back to the Father. And, and, and Jesus said in, in the book of John, John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17, it says, And I will pray to the Father and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be with you, in you. You know, in John chapter 14, it says, And I will pray to the Father and He will give you another helper. Right? You see, Jesus was here at that time. He was walking on this earth, right? He was walking on this earth. And as He was walking on this earth, before He went back to the Father, He said, I will give you another helper. So could it be that at that moment of time, Jesus was the helper? Jesus was the advocate. Jesus was the comforter. Jesus was the healer. And Jesus was all these things that the Holy Spirit are. Because you see, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are all one with different functions. So whatever the Father is, the Son is, and whatever the Son is, the Holy Spirit is. So when Jesus went back to the Father, He said, I will give you another helper. And if you think about it, church, if you remember in the New Testament, on the, in the Old Testament, right up to the New Testament, all those teachers of the law and the Pharisees, when Jesus was around them, and when Jesus was performing miracles and signs and wonders, they didn't even realize that He was Jesus. They didn't even know that He was the Messiah. In fact, they're still waiting for the Messiah to come back when Jesus has come and died on the cross for every one of our sins. And He has won the victory on that cross. Amen. And they didn't even realize that Jesus was around there. And here Jesus is saying, I'm going back to hev heaven, but I will send you another helper that will help you in all things, that will teach you everything that you need to know. But here we are again, 2,000 years later. And sometimes we forget the person of the Holy Spirit. 
Because we are so used to doing the things that we do, to sing the songs that we sing, to walking into church and doing our mundane, everyday things, even spending time with the Lord and reading the Word and praying. And we are so used to living our lives with the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, but not with a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I think, church, that if you are going to step into something new, if God's going to bring something new, something powerful, that as a church, we need to step into, once again, remember and be reminded of the fact that the Holy Spirit walks with us every single day of our life. He has the promise. He has never left you. He will never forsake you. He is still close by. He's still around. It's whether or not we want to welcome Him. It is whether or not we want to allow Him to do what He needs to do. In every aspect, if from the media to worship, to even every one of us worshipping the Lord and hearing the Word and walking into church or even walking into your daily lives, we need to remember that the Holy Spirit is the most important person in our lives. We need Him, church. We need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything. You know, David in the Bible, he knew that. Because when he sinned against God, the first thing he said, Lord, Lord, created me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Do you think David didn't know that God was always with us? Do you think that he didn't know that he will never leave us nor forsake us? Do you think David didn't understand that? But, but the need, the desire, the longing, the fact that he knew that without the Holy Spirit, he will not be able to survive, he will not be able to live, that longing, that desire caused him to say, Lord, please, 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 don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. I cannot live without your Holy Spirit. No matter what I do in my life, no matter how I think I have it under control, no matter how talented I am, no matter how much I have or how least or less I have, I still want and I still need the person of the Holy Spirit in my life. The Holy Spirit is kind. He's compassionate. He's a comforter. He's an advocate. He's a teacher. See, you see, God never designed for human beings or for all of us to live our lives on our own. Never. He always meant for us to depend on a Savior. Because from the beginning of time, God already designed the entire world from the time it started to the time it will end. He already had Jesus in the picture 2,000 years ago. He already had Jesus when the world was being created. Do you know the Holy Spirit was there when the world was created? I'm sure you all know this. If you don't know, I'm going to tell you because in the book of Genesis, in the first chapter, it talks about the atmosphere and it talks about the Spirit of the Lord hovering around the atmosphere and the Father was there. The Holy Spirit existed way before anything. He existed together with the Father and together with the Son. That's why they are one. And the person of the Holy Spirit was given. Jesus, the Lord, already planned redemption before He created the world. And He planned that we should never be alone. That's why when Jesus died on the cross and He said, I'm going back to my Father, He said, my people need someone to depend on. My people need a comforter. They need a Savior. They need a helper. And I will send the Holy Spirit as a helper to us. And, and you see, it, 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 it blows my mind because it says this, the world does not believe in Him because it cannot see Him or know Him. Let me ask you this question. How many of you can see the Holy Spirit? No, we cannot see the Holy Spirit. So we're actually the same as the world. We cannot see Him. But do you know the Holy Spirit? 
we know the Holy Spirit. That's the difference between us and the world. And even though we cannot see Him, we know Him, we feel Him, we know that His power is real. We've seen miracles and signs and wonders and healing. We've seen breakthrough. I'm sure the Holy Spirit has comforted you in some way or another, whether you realize it or not. He has always been a part of our lives. But today I want to remind us that we need to want the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need, because we're stepping into a new season, and when God pours out His Spirit, I don't want any of us to be oblivious to whatever God is doing. I don't want us to be oblivious to, I know this, and so I'm going to stick with this. How many of you know God doesn't do the same thing twice, the same way? Yes, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. Like Jeff said yesterday, that's his character. That's his nature, right? But he's a creative God. He doesn't do things the same way. You all remember in the New Testament how Jesus came to the earth? And when Jesus came, why did the Pharisees and teachers of law not recognize him? Because he messed up the system. He went and ate dinner with Zacchaeus lah. The tax collector who stole people's money. Bro. You know? <laughs> right? Jesus changed everything. So if you have a perception of how the Holy Spirit is supposed to be and how He will come, I suggest that you change that perception. I suggest that you continue to have a relationship with Him because until and unless we have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to realize when He's here and when he's doing something, it may not look like what we imagine. It may not look like what we think. But the Bible says that God created us to depend on someone, a savior. And the word of God says, my sheep will know my voice. They will hear my voice. They will know me. None of them will be lost. Let's read that verse together. Do I have it? Yes. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 28, it says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. We are called, we are meant to hear His voice. We are meant to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. We are meant to know the closeness of God. Did you think that the voice of God is only meant for the pastors and leaders? Can I tell you that's not true? You have access to the voice of the Father. You have access to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You have access to His heart, church. We have access to Him. And you know, church, like a lot of times we forget about this because... It's easy for us. It's easy for us to see and believe something that we can see. It's easy for us to understand something that we can explain. Right? It's easy for us to just believe something that, oh, it's visible, it's there. Right? When Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit came, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came in physical form of a dove. Why do you think that? First of all, these guys didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Imagine if the Holy Spirit's voice came and there was nothing physical to show that, that the Holy Spirit was there. They won't believe that it's the Holy Spirit. That's humanity, you know, that's us. We need to believe something that we see. We need to see, then we believe. But the kingdom does not work that way. The kingdom of God does not work that way. Sometimes you need to believe in order to see. You need to receive before you even get it or see it. And that's the same way I want to encourage you and remind you that the Holy Spirit is supposed to be a part of our lives. He's supposed to be our friend. He's supposed to be our comforter. He's supposed to be our lover. And everything that we do, we are supposed to depend on Him, to talk to Him, to ask Him. But we don't. We don't, you know, most of the time we only talk to the Holy Spirit when we spend time with Him in the morning before we go to work. And, and I'm not preaching to you, I'm telling myself first. I'm preaching to me this morning. As a reminder that if we're going to walk in the seven pillars, we need to come back to having a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
You know, my first experience with the Holy Spirit was when I was 11 years old. It was not when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Um, how many of you are still awake? Can I just see your hand? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, if you know, you know both my parents, my mom and dad are men and women of God. And when I was in my mom, mother's womb, my dad laid hands on my mom. You tell me if I'm right, okay, and, or wrong. And um, he prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit when I was in my mother's womb. My mom, she heard me one day, like making some sounds or something. <laughs> when I was how old? Three? Oh, she is old. And she realized that I was actually speaking in tongues. So I don't exactly remember. I mean, I don't know, but all I can know, I remember and all I know is that I've been able to speak in tongues ever since. I, I just, yeah. So I, I don't remember having g gotten the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, even though they prayed for us in one of the camps and then, you know, everyone spoke in tongues, but I felt like I already had it, you know. So that was that. So you see, you can speak in tongues. Now that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has given you that gift, okay? And you can speak in tongues, but you still, while you, as you speak in tongues, you are speaking in tongues, you speak in tongues when you're praying and everything, but you can still not have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. You can speak in tongues and still not know the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, because that's just a gift and that's just uh, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, right? Speaking in tongues. So, at the age of 11, I remember I was, um, I'm a church girl, okay? So, my parents are both pastors and I used to attend church every week and uh, come to church, sit in front, do coloring, whatever, come for all the services. And I used to go to children's church and I, I remember, I, I loved it. I love children's church because I got good friends there and everything. And so one day we went for this children's camp, like a prayer camp. And I remember the pastor was just saying, um, uh, okay, if, you, if your parents are Christian, it doesn't make you a Christian. If you go to church every week, it doesn't mean you have a relationship with God. And if you pray and lift your hands during worship, it doesn't mean you have a relationship with God. So I was like, what is this guy saying, man? And then he said, only if you have asked Jesus to come into your heart and you have a personal relationship with Him, that's what makes you a Christian, okay? And in my mind, I was like, dude, I, I think I haven't done that. Probably my father would have made me say the prayer a few times when I was younger. But I can't remember knowing him. Don't complain about me to him, okay? <laughs> but I'm sure he would have done that. All huh? right, mom. <laughs> and, but I, don't, I didn't remember. So in my mind, I was thinking, I was 11 at the time. And I cannot remember. So I was like, oh, actually, I've, I've never done that. And so... I stood up when the pastor asked, how many of you have never accepted Jesus before? So I stood up and then all my friends, right, around me, all my friends in children's church, they're all like, bro, why are you standing up, man? You're a pastor's uh, daughter. Da, da, da. I said, don't disturb me. I said, don't disturb me. This is my moment with God, you know. I said, don't disturb me. Then I just stood up and closed my eyes and I said that prayer, you know. Um, just a simple, normal prayer like we pray to ask Jesus to come to our heart, right? In that moment, as, we, as I said the sinner's prayer, I felt somebody embrace me, hug me from the back, literally, literally. And at that moment, I just, I started crying and I saw, like my eyes were closed like this, but I saw my sins, like things that I've done that were wrong. I was 11, I don't know what could it be, but all that. I saw it come in front of me and I saw the blood of Jesus like wash my sins like that. And I was crying, and I remember I was crying. I don't even know why I was crying. But it didn't feel like a long time, right? But after that, I went, when I opened my eyes, it was about two hours later. It was two hours later. And I didn't realize everyone was gone, like there were a few people around and stuff like that. But do you know that that experience changed me? Because I didn't know what, it was, what happened to me. Nobody came and told me, that's the Holy Spirit meeting you. I wish someone told me that. That's the Holy Spirit wanting to have a relationship with you. That's the Holy Spirit wanting to be close to you. But no one told me that. But all I knew was that the next day, that as I, as I woke up in the morning, I felt, the, I felt God, I felt the presence of God close to me. And when I started to speak, there were some things that I couldn't say. 
that I wanted to say, but I couldn't say. And I felt like, oh, I shouldn't say it. There was a pullback in my spirit. Like I couldn't say it. And I can explain it now because I know that the Holy Spirit met me and He's close to me. And sometimes the Holy Spirit doesn't want us to say some things because it may hurt Him or upset Him. He's a person. And that was my first ever experience with the Holy Spirit. And that's why I, I want to remind everyone here at church today that your kids, right, from the age of 11 to the age of 19, those are the most important years of their life. If they don't encounter the Holy Spirit, if they don't meet the Holy Spirit, and if they don't see you encountering the Holy Spirit or knowing that you have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, they will walk on with life just walking in the normal traditions of going to church and lifting up their hands in worship. They may even play music on the worship team and still not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And was my life perfect after that? No, it wasn't. A lot of things happened along the way. Ups, downs, crazy times. But at every point of my life, I knew the Holy Spirit was there. Because I met Him. No, I didn't meet Him. He met me. He met me. <laughs> he met me. He encountered me. And from that day onwards, I remember at the age of 15, I was asked to lead worship for the first time. Not really. They said there was no one, so you just do it. I was in Sutra Church at that time, and it was in bilingual, so it was English and Bahasa. I didn't know how to lead worship. No one sat down with me and said, okay, this is how you do it. Well, huh, Kevin? No one sat down with me and told me what to do, you know? And I was spending time with God. I sat down. I said, oh, I know what to do, man. I'm so nervous. Even though it was a youth service, I sat down. I said, Holy Spirit, because I know that you're real, can you teach me how to lead worship? And I remember at the age of 14, for the first time, I heard the voice of God. Not the God, God. I heard the voice of God at 14 for the first time. And I... You know why? I was so hungry. I said, God, I cannot. I know everyone else, they can hear your voice. Why I cannot hear? I think that I can hear your voice. When I read the word, I want to hear what you're saying to me. I don't want to just read words. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your heart. And one day God spoke to me. I will share the story another day about that. But I heard the voice of God. From the day I heard the voice of God, I knew that the Holy Spirit came to be our helper. He came to teach us all things. That means my studies, that means my business deal, that means worship leading, that means playing an instrument. And I sat down and I said, Holy Spirit, teach me what to do. I don't know how to lead worship. And the Holy Spirit said, you just go, I'll lead you. And I closed my eyes and as I began to lead worship, I'll tell you what happened. As I began to lead worship, I just began to follow what he said to do. Should I sing a fast song? Yes, I should sing a fast song. Of course, I came up with a song list. But should I go to the fast song? Yes. And then what should I do? Should I sing the verse first? Should I sing the bridge now? Should I stop? Should I end? I just followed every single instruction from the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I didn't even care if worship was good that day. You know why? Because all that mattered was that he was speaking so much to me. Is that there was no other voice there but him and his voice telling me what to do and where to go. And because he was telling me where to go and what to do, that's what he wanted and not what I wanted, right? Shouldn't worship, prayer, discipleship, missions all be about that? about what God wants, about what the Holy Spirit wants, about, about His heart and His voice and His eyes. Shouldn't it all be about that? Sometimes we forget about that because we are really good at what we do. We can speak and we can preach whatever we want to preach. But until today, if I don't hear His voice telling me what I should say, I will not say what I'm supposed to say. And I'm teaching, right, in school. I love it. I love it because I get to be in an, an environment where maybe 90 to 100% of people are non-believers and I get to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit 
teaching me and guiding me and leading me every step of the way. And when it gets hard, He comforts me. Church, we need to walk with the Holy Spirit. We need to walk with the Holy Spirit. We need to hear His voice. We need to know Him. Okay, I'm not going to take a long time. I'm going to just tell you a few things that the Holy Spirit is and I'm sure you already know this, okay? The Holy Spirit affirms us. How many of you just need to hear a voice that affirms you in the decisions that you make? Whether you're making the right decisions or not, whether you're going the right way or not, whether you're singing the right verse and the right chorus or not. How many of you need to hear whether you're playing the right chords or not or hitting the right beat, man? Right? (laughs) How many of us just need to hear the voice of affirmation from the, the Holy Spirit? See, in Luke chapter 3 verse 32, and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus. You know this verse. In a bodily form like a dove. And His voice came from heaven. You are my beloved Son and in you I am well pleased. See, that's all we need. You need an affirmation. You need to know you're doing the right thing. Close your eyes and ask, Holy Spirit, what do you think about this? And as long as He says, I'm proud of you, as long as He says you're doing the right thing, you will have full confidence to do whatever it is you need to do. I remember this. Um, I was preaching in a camp in a, um, in, a, in a medical school, my sister's medical school cross-culture camp. It was a Christian fellowship camp. She was not there. She graduated already at the time. And I was preaching together with uh, Narita. I'm not sure if Narita is here this morning, but she's in our church as well. And I was preaching in a camp together with her. And I remember there was this girl who was there from the first day who was so, who didn't want to like participate in anything. Okay, she was, she had a bad mood. She hated whatever we were talking about. She always questions and like, she's like, like, you know, like rolling her eyes. Even though we were trying to really be nice to her and embrace her and like, you know, um, and, and, and just have some fun. But she wasn't. So I was like, God, what, what's happening? Like, I, I don't know what's going on. Like, she's the only one who, you know, hasn't like, you know, joined us and stuff like that. So as I was praying, um, as I was praying for her on the last day when she came, you know, And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and showed me, showed me what happened in the past. That was the first time I got scared. I really, it was my first time and I got scared because I saw that she was abused in her past. And okay, first thing God can show you. The second thing is, how do you communicate it with the person? Right, so I asked her, I said, um, I asked those who are around to go away a bit. I said, hey, um, can I just ask you about whatever happened when you were this, this age? I was nine or ten years old. And she said, she looked at me, nothing happened. So I said, okay. <laughs> then I asked her, um, okay, so how about your family? Is everything okay with your family? The moment I asked her that, she started tearing up. And so I told her, you know, you can trust me. I, I, Jesus told me what happened when you were ten. Then she told, she told me back, you know, she said, okay, if Jesus told you, tell me, like, what is it? Because she was really like, you know, so I said, okay. <laughs> I was freaking out, okay, church. I was really scared. But I said, Holy Spirit, you showed me, isn't it? Right? And I said, Holy Spirit, should I do it? And I felt the peace of God. So I told her, I said, w- did this happen when you were 10 years old? Immediately she started crying. She said, for all my life, no one has ever known about this. And because no one has ever known, my parents are even believers, so I don't believe in God. I think that they didn't represent God well because this thing happened when I was young. And no one knows about this. And I don't know how you know. You don't even know me. Then I told her, I said, it's the Holy Spirit. From that moment onwards, her whole heart, attitude, face, everything changed. Just because of one moment where I asked God, Holy Spirit, am I saying the right thing? And I felt the affirmation of God. You see, church, we, we can hear the affirmation of men all day saying like, hey, you did a great job. Like, you know, amazing job. The presence of God is so strong today in worship, in preaching and everything. But, but that isn't enough, church. That isn't enough because when you hear the affirmation of the Father, of the Holy Spirit in your heart, everything will change. You just need one word from God for everything to change. 
Peter denied Jesus three times. He was a coward. And Jesus said, no, Peter, feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. And then he goes up and he starts preaching in front of 3,000 people. Just one word from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit affirms us. Number two, the Holy Spirit gives us the power for the supernatural. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but when but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, um, and to the ends of the earth. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we become different people. See, Paul, Paul in the Bible, remember Saul, who was in the Bible? He was a murderer. He was a liar. He killed people. He killed Christians. But when the Holy Spirit came upon him, because of Paul, we probably have the church of God. We have all the letters in the Bible, all the instruction for the believers because that man encountered and had a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom and understanding. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 12, it says, The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of God. Where do you need wisdom today, church? Sometimes we need wisdom in how we communicate with one another. Sometimes we need wisdom in whatever we do in our lives, in our work. You know, in making decisions, we need wisdom. And that wisdom comes from having a personal relationship with God with the Holy Spirit. See, when the Holy Spirit is close to you, you can trust Him because He is the God who knows everything. He knows all of it. He, 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 he came to help us and to teach us all things. So the Holy Spirit doesn't just teach us how to pray for people and so that they will be healed. He doesn't just teach us how to come to church and worship. He doesn't just teach us about Jesus. But He teaches you about the things that you are involved in, in your job, in your business, in your designs, in your worship, in your, in your skill, in your playing, in your doing camera, Brandon, in doing sound. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom. But you know what we do? We have so many reels nowadays. We have so many YouTube channels and YouTube videos and so many people speaking into our lives that we listen and we learn nothing wrong with that. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not saying that all that is wrong. But what I'm saying is that we have so many things and sometimes these things distract us from the voice of God that is trying to speak to us and give us ideas to move forward. Do you know when I'm in the, when I'm, when I'm in the shower, I'm getting ready? I'll ask God, God, give me some idea for Campus Plus. Give me some ideas for the church. What should we do, Lord? It's easy for me to just Google it, isn't it? And to be honest, church, sometimes we do. Because so many other people have done it in a so... so oh, my English today. I don't know how my teacher... <laughs> So many people have done it so much better in such a in a, such a better manner. That sentence is just not making sense. But you know what I mean, church. So many people have done a better job than what we can do. So it's easy to just go and Google and find out what it is and just do the same thing. If it worked for them, it worked for us. Let me just tell you, it doesn't work that way with the kingdom of God. Because God has fresh ideas for you every single day. God has new ideas for you. And, 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 and if God's going to give us a new wine, we can't take the old wine skin, whatever we knew, the ideas that we had, we can't take it and put it into the old wine skin. It will burst. It doesn't work that way. And the other day, we were just talking about Christmas, by the way. Church, you should be here for Christmas. It's going to be fun. It's going to be really good. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit will inspire every idea. Okay? So you should be here for Christmas. Get ready for that. Okay? And you know what? Church? We were just talking about Christmas. And we are just like brain, brainstorming some ideas. Talking about it. And then, Pastor Jonathan said, Hey, we need to hear what God is saying. What does God want us to do? It's true. We need to hear what God is saying. See, because you know why? We are so advanced. We are so happy with our oh, confidence, man. I can do this. Oh, this is the way I'm going to do it. This is how it works. It works and it's going to happen like that. And that's it. But what is the Holy Spirit saying? See, if He's close to us, He will pull us back and say, hey, I don't think so. 
Sometimes when I'm having a long conversation with someone, right, and I'll just da 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 I can yap sometimes, okay? And when I'm yapping and yapping and yapping and I'm done yapping, and then after I'll feel like, oh man, I think I shouldn't have said that. That's not my conscience telling me I said the wrong thing. That's the Holy Spirit saying you shouldn't have said that. Maybe you should stop yapping to me, okay? <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit. Wisdom and understanding. The Holy Spirit will fight for you. John chapter 11, verse 26, it says, But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I've said to you. He's an advocate. Do you need someone to fight for you? Don't take revenge, church. He's, he's the one who's going to fight for you. Do you need him to hold a sword? Or do you need him to embrace you? How do you need him to fight for you? Only you know, church. Sometimes whatever you go through, only you will understand. And only you know, but don't, don't take, it, take matters into your own hands. Don't do that. Because you need to understand that the Holy Spirit that was given to us is an advocate that will fight every battle for us. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You, don't, you just need to be still. How can I be still when everything around me is going wrong? I need to give my opinion about the Olympics. You see what they did, all those gay people and everything. I need to put my opinion on social media. No, you don't need to. You can if you want to. Nobody's stopping you. It's your social media. But what about if Calvary Community Church just stays still and allows the Lord to fight our battles for us? What will happen then, church? Because let me just tell you something. You can fight your battle and you can do well at fighting your battle, but nobody can fight your battle and win that battle like how God wins our battles for us. Amen? Come on, if you want to clap, you clap, church. Nobody can fight your battles. He fights our battles for us. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. Church, you can choose, church, if you want to have a relationship with Him or not. You can choose. He's not forcing you. He's such a kind, compassionate, loving God. And, he, and if you don't, it's okay too. But if you do, everything will be different for you. I'm telling you that from experience. I'm telling you that because I know that He's so good. He fights for you. And I just, I'm reminded of this story, you know, church. Um, and then we'll end after this. I'm reminded of the story of how last time um, I used to lead the youth and uh, together with Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Derek was one of the youth at the time. Jeffrey was one of the youths. Eunice Tan was one of the youths. Esther Tan and um, Narita and Chris and all. We, 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 we had a good time, huh? Okay. And I remember how at that time, we, I was young, man. I was, let's talk about me. I was young. But I told John the time, I said, Pastor John the time, I said, hey, I, I, he asked me, what do you want to do for the young people this year? So I said, I think I really want to disciple them. And he was like, okay, you just, go, the girls, I said, I'm a disciple. Then he was like, okay, you just do it. I was like, huh? And guys, church, I tell you, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I really didn't know what I was doing, Okay. I had no idea. All I knew is I wanted them to be hungry for God. I wanted them to know more about God. I wanted them to understand who God is and to experience the encounters that I experienced. That's all I knew. And so what I did was I said, oh, okay. He said, okay, just do it. I said, okay. So I just asked God, Holy Spirit, what do I do? And I said, okay, whatever encounters that I have experienced, I'm going to share with them. Whatever God speaks to me from the Word, I'm going to share with them. So because I hear the voice of God so clearly, right? I will pray for them the whole week and I will get words for every one of them. I don't know if you remember or not. And I will write it down and then I will come to youth on Saturday and I will give them the words and all of them will be like, how do you know? How like, you know? And they will be like, whenever you ask them, what, we, what do you want us to pray for you about? Right, and we will have a worship moment and we'll have an altar call every time. I remember, especially Eunice and Derek and Jeff, whenever we ask them, like, What do you want from God? Right, they will ask you, they will say, I, I want to hear the voice of God, 
I want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. I remember so clearly and I remember how you heard the voice of God for, for the first time, right? And I remember this so clearly. You know why? They were so hungry to hear the voice of God, to know the heart of God. And today, if you talk to them, if you ask them, even Eunice, Eunice is not here, she's in Singapore, right? Even if you ask them right now, if they still can hear the voice of God and how they're doing, they will tell you what God spoke to them. And they have a genuine relationship with the Holy Spirit. No matter what, nothing can take that away. You know why? Because they were hungry and they encountered the voice of God and they are changing the world today in their own way. Were they perfect? Oh my goodness, no. Did we have a hard time? Yes. Did we give them a hard time? Yes, also. <laughs> right? We give you a hard time, isn't it? But you look at them today serving the Lord, loving the Lord, pastoring. It's only because of the voice and the relationship with the Holy Spirit that will grow you, that will cause you to grow. And parents, that's it, that's it for your kids. That's it, they need the voice of the Holy Spirit. They need an encounter with the Holy Spirit. No matter how many temptations, you know, see, we focus on all the temptations, on all the bad things they do, on all the the ways that, that they are affected by temptation and everything, but we don't focus on one thing and that is Teaching them to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And you see, when we do that, they walk in the integrity of their heart. They walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage you, church, no one is too young, no one is too old to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I just want to encourage everyone, I'm done, okay, I'm done, it took a long time. But one thing that you will know when you have the Holy Spirit and you're walking with the Holy Spirit is Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love and joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. You see, sometimes there's an expectation of how a Christian should behave. And say, you Christian man, why you don't love people? You Christian man, how come you got no patience? Why you get angry on the road, horn everyone? Huh? You Christian, ah? why you fight with your wife? We, there's an expectation, right? For us, you're a Christian person, right? Why you behave like this? No, no, no. It's not actually. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's the way you will know whether a person is walking with the Holy Spirit or not. And don't go and judge your, whoever's sitting next to you now. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> don't do that. That's not what we're supposed to do, church. Come on. <laughs> right? But that's the fruit of us having a relationship. So I said, it's, it's up to you, church. Like, it's your decision whether you want to walk with the Holy Spirit or not. But if you walk with the Holy Spirit, these are the fruits that you will manifest. Love and joy and patience. And when the world looks at you and when they look at you and they look at themselves, they will stay, they have to see a difference. Because in today's, now, like in today's day, in context, like, like what's when I look and when I sit at a, a food court and I, I just ask myself the day, you know, hey, Crystal, like what's the difference between you and that person? They're also working outside and, you know, they're also like going through life and everything. What's the difference? And I remember that I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. And if the Holy Spirit's not leading me, then like there's no way to live. That's no way to live, church. Can we just close our eyes? Yeah, let's close our eyes and I, I pray that you remember what I said, but more than that, I pray that you feel the presence of Jesus today. And that the Holy Spirit encounters you. So I'm not going to ask you to stand to your feet, church. I want you, please don't fall asleep, but I want you to just focus on Jesus right now. And I want you to ask God, Lord, I need to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need to meet you again, Lord. I need to walk with you again. Can you show me? Can you teach me? Because churches, there's, there's no formula, church. There's no step one to step five. There's no... It's just whether you're hungry for Him or not, whether you love Him or not, whether you want to walk in a way that is worthy and pleasing to Him. So at this moment, I'm just going to let you have your moment with the Lord. 
I don't want us to be distracted. Lord, I pray every distraction will just be removed in Jesus' name. And let your people just encounter you right now, Lord, wherever they are. Whether you want to speak to them with your voice, whether you want to embrace them, whether you want to just, I, I just sense in my spirit, some of you, God's going to just drop His peace in your heart. Because there's been a raging, a raging from everything that you've had to do and accomplish. Even expectations that are not real, God is just dropping His peace in your heart, in your spirit right now. So can you just begin to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you? I'm going to sing, but you don't have to sing with me. I want you to encounter the Lord right now. Just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Show me your face, Lord. Show me your face. And gird up my legs that I might stand in this holy place. Show me your face, Lord, your power and grace, your power and grace. I can make it to the end if I could just see your face. Some of you, I just see Jesus holding your heart right now. Holy Spirit, would you come and touch your people? Would you come and touch your people, Lord? Just let Jesus touch you. Let the Holy Spirit minister to your ass, Lord, Lord. I want to walk with you again. I want to hear you again. I want to know your heart again, Lord. I may have been distracted. I may have forgotten but remind me Lord today what it means to walk with you Holy Spirit thou art welcome in this place Holy Spirit thou art welcome
we stand to our feet, church. We just love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're so real in this place. In the church this morning, I just want to open this altar to anyone who just wants to have an encounter with Jesus. Anyone who wants to have an encounter with Jesus. And I don't want us to wait for one another. I don't want us to look to the left, to the right. But, but for me, I'm going to be here. I'm going to ask Jeff to come. I'm going to ask Pastor Derek. I'm going to ask Pastor Betty to come and to just pray and release an encounter of the Holy Spirit upon every single person who is hungry and who desires. And this is the moment between you and God. And so, I'm going to make space. <laughs> but this is between you and the Lord. And so, I'm going to just count to three. I'm not going to ask you to put up your hands even. But if you want to meet Jesus today, it doesn't matter if you are, it is late or whatever. We're not going to take a lot of time. But if you want to encounter Jesus and you're saying, Lord, like I want to have a touch from you again, Lord. And this is your moment. I'm going to ask you to just come to the front. Just don't wait for anyone else. And we're going to sing Holy Spirit, Lord, welcome again. And if that's you, if you need an encounter with Jesus... I want you to come to the front. Yeah, that's right. You can start coming now. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Only potent Father, of mercy and grace Thou art welcome in this place You know, church, there's still many of you who need to be here and you know you need to be here. So just come. Just don't wait for each other. We're going to close the service. I'm going to pray. And we're going to pray here. Worship team, I think Kevin, can you just go up? You just go and sing together with Jared. And I want you to host the presence of God. Ask the Holy Spirit what He wants you to sing, okay? And church, if you need to be here, be here. We're going to minister to people. And if you're here, just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. The presence of God is already here. So I'm going to pray. Lord, I pray you bless your people as they leave from this place, God, this morning. We pray, God, that your presence will go with them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you be so real to them. That you walk into their rooms, you encounter them. And let them have an amazing week ahead this week. Bless them, Lord. Lord, I declare that they will prosper in all things and be in good health, God. Even as their soul prospers. Bless them. In Jesus' precious name, we ask and we pray. Amen.